Hello friends, this is the Wikipedia article in English. It's available in several many other languages as you can see here on the sidebar about the circle. And further down you have not only the history, how the circle was defined in previous days, but also analytic results and this means you have equations. And maybe you've heard of the number pi. <laughs> Pi is extremely, extremely nice to create a circle. But for Maya we need parametric forms. And the parametric forms, because they have the coordinates in uh, x and y, uh, we need a definition of the x right or left um, and the y up and down. And basically if you ignore the a and the r, the r of course the radius, the a and b are the coordinates of the center of that circle, we can just uh, reduce this to x equals cosine time and uh, y equals sine time and uh, we apply this now to Maya. So this is a new scene we create a sphere and since we don't want to deal with dimensions really we make the sphere very small and we focus on it and we go to the side window or the front window for example it's tiny, but uh, there's a reason for this. Now we go to Polygon Sphere. It's P Sphere 1. We just apply what we just heard. Equals, we type in in this field, equals cosine. And the time in Maya is called time. Would you have guessed that? You need to put it in um, parentheses, in round brackets. So it's equals cosine bracket open time bracket closed and you press enter and the equation is finished. Now what the sphere does is this. It swings from the right to the left. We can extend the frame range a little bit. So it keeps swinging. How do we make a circle out of this? Well, uh, y is up and uh, x is to the right and to the left. And now if we type in equals cosine time, which would be the same as for the x elongation, that's what we have. We're swimming, swinging back and forth in a diagonal way. This is not a circle, is it? Well, because, and we can go for change, uh, right mouse click edit expression, because here we need the sine instead of the cosine. Let's go back to the Wikipedia article. So x needs the cosine, y needs the sine. It doesn't matter really which one, but they have to be different. You can choose sine time for x and cosine time for y, if you like. So we're back here, I pressed edit, I close it now, and now we have a circle. What happens if we type in equals sign of time in the Z parameter field? Of course, nothing will change in that view here. We'll still see a circle. But if we go to the side view now, get a little bit closer, we see this. How about typing in equals sine of time times cosine of time. Press enter. Just to make it clear what I just typed in, I'll show you the expression. That's the expression. Equals sine of time times cosine of time. So this is what happens now. It shapes an 8. We don't see the 8 from, from this perspective here. But we can sort of see it in the perspective window. It looks like a very complex motion and it's so regular. That's the circle. 
and that's the 8. Finally, I want to show you how you can visualize the motion better. So you select this one, go to the animation menu, which I think is the key F4. And here you have visualize, and under visualize you can, for example, ghost the selected, or create an animation snapshot. Let's use the op option box here, set the uh, end time to the time slider, for example 240, and increment by 10, so we don't have a sphere every frame, and apply. Close. So this is the object we have now, which is a much better representation of what we see in 3D space than just watching the movement of a single sphere. So if you're teaching mathematics to someone, Maya is an ideal tool to do this. Have a nice day.